Uh, yeah, thanks, Mike. So we're here in the, the uh, uh, 3D Systems booth uh, with Scott Green, and we're going to take a look at, uh, I believe it's uh, Geomagic Control X, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so today we're showcasing not only Geomagic Control X, but the rest of our software solutions here at the booth. Uh, Geomagic Control X is especially exciting for us because it's the latest generation of our Geomagic Control quality control software. Um, so when developing this software, we try to keep in mind some really fundamental pieces of the inspection process, that being the measurement process, the process of understanding those measurements and how do you communicate those to all the different stakeholders. So uh, there are several features that we're highlighting today specifically for the measurement process. We have brand new CAD aware dimensioning that allows us to uh, directly place dimensions and inspection model, uh, define inspection models directly on top of the CAD as well as a fantastic uh, uh, live probing and live, uh, live scanning and live alignment tools that Mike is going to talk about and show. Um, so this is uh, interactive probing tools that allow us to work with portable CMMs in a pre-planned or unplanned kind of casual way. Uh, for the understanding part of the, of the software process, we've developed a multiple results and project kind of system which allows you to define uh, the same inspection model and look at different parts or series of parts uh, graphically right next to each other to really understand how different alignment scenarios may affect your results. And then for the communication portion we have a new view style reports which allow us to take um, really control over the um, custom viewpoints and how we put those into a reporting environment and make them look exactly like or as close as possible to prints. Um, and then I think we'll look maybe at a little bit at Mike's demo. Okay, that sounds good. Let's switch to screen share. Okay. So Mike's going to start the live inspect process, which calls up the pre-planned inspection routine and allows him to, in any order he wants to, measure the faces that are uh, highlighted or the points that are indicated. Now, we suggest the order to uh, define the alignment uh, using his adaptive alignment tool. The next thing we'll do is either a datum alignment or go directly into the inspection process. Now, uh, the inspection scenario can be not only, again, uh, pre-planned, but it could also just be called what we, what we do call a walk-up inspection. And walk-up inspection is more like uh, I have a print or a part or maybe some loose requirements and I just want to start measuring it. It's kind of like a gauging tool. Not so much a, a tool for repeated inspection, though you can repeat it. It's more flexible inspection and repeatable. Now, now I noticed that as he's taking uh, measurements that different parts of the uh, of the CAD here are highlighted in blue. That's 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 what's guiding him through the, the inspection process, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great point. Uh, uh, visually, graphically, we can see uh, either edges or faces that we need to go attack first. Uh, and we also suggest an order on how you go attack those faces. Yep. So, so that way we, we know that the, that the user is going to do these in, in where it matters is going to do it in the proper order. Yeah, correct. Also, we have the ability to switch between uh, not only tactile measurement, but also measurement with, um, with a laser line scanner or any other ultimate uh, additional sensor that's on the arm at any time. So I can switch between the two modes of measurement. Um, and then also after the fact, I can decide if I have probe data and non-contact data that inhabit the same space on the same feature, I can choose the priority. What's first? Do I choose probe data or do I choose the laser scan data to evaluate my feature? So, so you're saying in the kind of in the middle of a measurement, like, like well, I see, I guess you just answer my question because he's doing it now. Uh, you, you could switch from contact to, to non-contact. Now, would that include changing a probe head if you had to do that? Or does it have, to, in this case, they're both on the same, they're both on the same head, but would it have to be that way? Yeah, no, sure. You could actually stop at any point in time and re start your inspection process if you had to dock the arm and change your probe. Oh, okay. um, so it, it's a repeatable inspection process that, uh, again, you can use both contact and non-contact methods interchangeably. Okay, uh, sorry, I interrupted you right in the middle of your, uh, your talk. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so what else um, What else we got going here? Uh, reports, I'm imagining? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Mike will show probably a little bit of our flexible reporting system, which is actually really interesting. You can um, choose our kind of wizard, which allows us to uh, define, you know, kind of standard format for the report, and you can report against different projects. So let's say I have one inspection model and data from 10 different days or 10 different parts. I can take that series of data and actually uh, interleave the results on each other to report it concisely in a compact format uh, all right next to each other. Whereas before, you know, you'd have to take 10 Excel files, cut and paste stuff all together and do, you know, hack it all together in Word. So what we try to do is account for the fact that you may have requirements that might go outside of a single part project. So I, I was going to say, how, how might this be used, kind of this not having to cut and paste? I mean, what, what does this allow you to do now that maybe you couldn't do before, would have been a little bit more difficult to do before? 
Yeah, sure. So this is uh, this is uh, he's referring to our multi-result system, which allows you to. Uh, uh, it's basically like a container of projects, and I can choose those projects and and, uh, and 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 inspect them, and I can also put them all in the same report. So. For the application of multiple result system, it could be two parts that touch each other, and I could show the report on, on the report the interface between the two parts. It could be the same part but different days, different scans. It could also be the same part but different alignments too. So let's say I use a datum alignment and my feature fails or my feature passes. I could also investigate what happens if I uh, adjust my shrink back or adjust my pairing parameters or maybe use a slightly different alignment then I can see how that would actually affect my results because it certainly will affect your results. And what we try to do is show the traceability and the transparency and let the user go into the details and understand root cause uh, of, uh, of, of the process error. Okay, so and I'm, I'm guessing this might be able to help in kind of in the design phase, uh, prototype phases as well, kind of decide what might work, uh, what approach might work better. Is, would that make sense or is this really more kind of more on, on the production end? Yeah, no, that's actually an interesting point. So uh, as far as uh, working out root cause and root cause issues, that could also be in production. So inspection is not only just repeating the same part over and over and over again, it's also when you have an error and you have a problem, what caused that problem? How do you dig into the problem? How do you dig into the problem and decompose it and find a solution? With a lot of inspection workflows, it's very part driven and you just get what you get out. But what we want to try to do is give tools to help you really decompose the issue, understand the connection between the data points, understand why that number became what it is, and then let you do something about it. Okay, now uh, back to the reports again. Uh, are these basically canned reports, or are are they customizable? C can can the user kind of de determine what they want to put in a report and so forth, or is it all templatized? No, that's a great question, actually. So uh, the default workflow is just a really simple reporting tool. It assumes that you want to report the things that you've measured, and it gives you a standard order. But uh, more advanced reporting concepts include just uh, starting with a blank template, and then using our model manager system, you can select an item that you'd like to report, and then you can select from many reportable things. So I can drag and drop reporting reportable items into my report, but also I can uh, custom, custom fill a template so that I can uh, repeat that inspection over and over again. So custom values, custom tables, not just the things that we suggest that you report. Okay, so uh, if I was going to ask you, what are the kind of the three or four top key features that you see of, of uh, Geomagic Control X, what, what would they be? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think the key thing to remember is that Control X is a simply powerful metrology software. We wanted to try to bring a new, uh, a new version of the software to the market that, again, brought those same three things uh, uh, to the market, which were measurement, uh, clearer measurement, better understanding and tools to understand your data, and the ability to communicate those tools uh, and communicate those results to many types of stakeholders. So. Right. Yeah. Well, Scott Green, thanks for taking the time with us. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. All right, well, there we go. That's our tech corner there. Dirk and uh, Scott Green, Mike Sang of, of uh, Geomagic, uh, 3D Systems, I should say, using the, uh, the Geomagic Control X software, I believe, is, the, uh, is the, the product there that we were looking at. Um, so I appreciate Dirk doing that. Dirk, good job, of course. Uh, as always, with those tech corners you well, do. Uh, I was just kind of throwing a lot of last minute questions there at Scott, but he was a trooper, he took them. <laughs> yeah, and I think he did a great job because I think that that that, that is, is actually debuting right here, uh, officially debuted just yesterday here at the show right. for the first time. So I think yeah. that uh, really, really good, interesting uh, first look at uh, Geomagic Control it's, X. It's, it's, it's always funny when, when they're previewing, a, 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 somebody's previewing a new product because uh, uh, very often, the presenters will be seeing it for the first right. time. I, that was, and, and so it's like, okay, Scott, so you're going to present this product that you've never seen before. Learn, <laughs> learn something about it really fast. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but excellent job there by all involved. Mike Sang, of course, Scott Green, and, and Dirk, very good there. All right, well, we're coming up to the end of the show, but...